What's up folks, I'm Private Hudson and this is Minion Masters. This literally just came out on Steam and Early Access yesterday. Currently it is $16 and anyone who buys it while it's in Early Access gets a premium upgrade for life, which I'll get to later. I got this through this month's Humble Monthly Bundle. It is the first time that I've purchased one and I did it solely for Dragon's Dogma. I figured $12 was a good price for that game and since Humble Monthly always has high quality additional games, there was little risk. So far, Minion Masters has been the only game that I've been playing from this bundle. That should be a clear indicator that I find this game very, very interesting. People say that it is a mix of Hearthstone and Clash Royale. I've never played Clash Royale, so I don't know if that is a good reference or not, but to me this game is a lane attack slash defense type of game. There are two lanes, top and bottom. They both have a bridge in the middle, and whichever player controls the bridge gets bonus experience for their hero. Experience is very important, since it levels up your hero and unlocks more power passively. I've been mostly playing as Stormbringer, who is a ranged hero. His basic attack has him hit an enemy that is within 20 range. When you level up the first time, he gets global range, which is super effective for insta-killing trash creeps, as well as whittling away on huge ones. On his next level, all of your range creeps get a bonus of plus 2 range, and on his last level, his own attack speed is doubled. Clearly, you should be focusing on building a ranged deck around this hero. There are about 5 or 6 heroes in the game so far, and they all have different playstyles. There's a necromancer who can build tombstones on his field. After they've been up for 10 seconds, the next minion that's on their side, who is killed, gets respawned immediately, through the tombstone. Another hero spawns additional creeps when summoning units, so he has more of a zerg type of playstyle. The max amount of cards you can have in your deck is 10. Cards range from spells to minions and to structures. Each card has a mana cost and during battle you get 1 mana per second. You start the battle out with 4 random cards in your hand and you can see what the next card is after playing one. Currently there are around 65 cards. As always, you need to have a deck that not only favors your hero, but is balanced mana wise and has an answer for every situation. For example, there are a lot of cheap, low mana cards that use a bunch of weak creeps who can stall your slow ones or kill your single units quickly. A grenadier will wipe them out instantly. Flying units are immune to melee ones. There's also a huge fucking slow ass tank that ignores all creeps and only focuses on structures. He is fantastic for going directly for the enemy, however requires support from additional units in order to protect them. You can also counter these large creeps by using a pair of lancer units that have the potential to infinitely stunlock a unit. While this game certainly looks casual since gameplay revolves around simply placing units to go either top or bottom and have them fight things out automatically, there is a large amount of depth and potential game-changing combos. I've put in about 4 hours so far. I'm hardly an expert and as always my early access videos are simply first impressions, not reviews. Obviously since the game isn't even finished yet. I did, however, go all the way from Wood 5, which is the starting rank, all the way up to Bronze 1 through this short experience. Uh, you go from Wood to Stone and then Bronze. I imagine Silver and Gold are what follow. Maintaining a win streak gives you bonus MMR and allows you to rank up quicker. Winning a match gives you around 30 gold, which is pathetic. Minion Monsters also has daily quests, just like Hearthstone, that reward you with gold. You need 1,000 gold to buy a power token, this token unlocks a Wheel of Fortune-like spin, which is how you gain additional cards. Thankfully, the daily rewards that I've seen so far give you a minimum of 2,000 gold. I highly recommend playing through all the fucking NPCs. They're very easy, and you get rewarded two tokens for beating them, all in a single difficulty. So you get a maximum of six tokens when you finish beating all of them. You also have a chance of getting some blue monies through these token spins, which is the equivalent of dust from Hearthstone. Now, I don't remember what all the currencies in this game are called. There's, there's red monies, there's blue monies, and there's gold. Red monies can only be bought with real monies. Sometimes you get them as a reward for ranking up through the ladder or as a level up reward, but I imagine it's only for the low levels as a one-time thing. Blue monies is dust. You get this from salvaging cards and token spins. And then there's gold, which is only used to buy wheel spins. And herein lies the problem with the game. It currently has a concurrent active population count of around 300 players. The game is extremely fun and I like it a lot. However, $20, which is the cost of the game without the current discount, is a significant investment. In order to play a game that is not completely different from existing free-to-play ones, it is definitely less of a grind than Hearthstone. However, 
However, the crafting system was pretty much directly taken from there. Crafting cards requires a significant amount of dust, at least 500 generally speaking. And you only get 25 for salvaging common shit. To make matters worse, Stormbringer is the only free hero. There are some other heroes available for weekly rotations, but in order to purchase them, you have to use either dust or real monies. The cheapest hero is only 500 dust, which isn't that bad, but every other one is at least a thousand. Even cosmetics, such as changing the look of your half of the arena, requires either spending dust or real monies. Seriously, the only thing that gold is used for are for those power tokens. If you buy this game in early access, or if you received it through the humble monthly bundle like I have, you get a permanent premium upgrade. With this upgrade, you receive twice as much gold per battle for one year. That isn't really saying much, as a win usually gives you 30 gold. So now instead of 30 gold, you'll be getting 60. Yeah, that, that's nothing. This premium upgrade also gives you 2,500 red monies and 500 dust. You also get a permanent 50% experience boost. Now this is significant, as I've gone from level 0 to level 20 in approximately 4 hours. Most of the time when you level up, you are rewarded with a thousand gold, which is enough for a token. The game has an infinite amount of levels, and it looks like the most efficient way to get cards and dust without spending real money is just to keep leveling up for more tokens. However, does that premium upgrade really feel like it is worth $20? I don't think so. On the Steam store page, the developers write that this game may become free to play. Who the fuck are they kidding? The awful monetization system is already in place. They're doing the same thing that Dungeon Defenders 2 did and what Battlerite is doing right now. Essentially, you're paying to get access into a closed beta. You're giving them cash to finish development as well as the privilege to provide feedback. Yet your sole reward is nothing more than a booster. If they release this with a price tag, it'll be as dead as Battleborn. The monetization is the only real thing I can criticize so far. I mean, the game just had a closed alpha in November and just launched in early access yesterday. It's very well polished, runs at 120 FPS on the highest settings at 2560 by 1440. It already has built-in replays that are saved locally, and it is an absolute joy to play. I'm far from figuring out any competent strategies, but surprisingly, I've been winning most of my matches. The matches are usually around 3 minutes long, and it only takes about 20 seconds to find an opponent. I already had a guy rage quit on me, which was hilarious. I was experimenting with some awful fucking build. At around level 8, you unlock a card that is basically a porta potty that spawns a crossbow dude every few seconds. These guys are piss weak, and you can summon three of them with a two mana card. This porta potty is six mana cards, so I ended up removing some of my high mana cards from the deck. This resulted in hordes of weak ass creatures whittling away at the enemy. I would have won eventually, but the guy ended up rage quitting after five minutes. I don't think there's a surrender option currently, and this was the longest match that I've played. And as I discover more and more cards, the game becomes deeper. I've won at least five matches single-handedly thanks to one card. It's seven mana and summons five legionnaires. However, if your enemy controls both bridges, it summons eight. You can easily feint a defeat and then completely destroy all the enemy creeps with this card and win the game. As the game matures and more people spend time with it, I'm sure a lot of optimal strategies will arise, but for now I'm having fun experimenting, doing random shit and still somehow winning. I wish the developers the best of luck with this game. It's a ton of fun, but the price is way too fucking steep right now. I hope they will fix their ridiculous monetization, as well as reduce the current cost to entry, as this game is so fun and I really, really want to see it succeed. It's my dream to find an online collectible card game that has at least a fraction of the player base that Hearthstone has, without any of the fucking ridiculous grinding and pay-to-win shit.